So at Fortinet, you know, we're very focused on, uh, you know, how machine learning can help us solve problems, uh, various security problems for the enterprise IT environment. We know that what the challenges are. So I'm going to spend some time talking about the challenges. But in this session, we're going to explain how machine and lear learning specifically advances web API, uh, web services and API protection, right? So it's a very specific uh, need that organizations have because applications are being deployed faster than ever across more distributed IT estates. And the, the IT, or excuse me, the security practice is challenged to be just as agile as application delivery, right? And that's a significant challenge. So I'll get into some of the details about that. But if you didn't see our last session, this hopes to extend on that last session where we talked about some of the other capabilities that we have for other attack vectors. But we're gonna take um, um, a specific approach to this with my teammates. My name is Aiden Walden. I'm the Director for Cloud Architecture and Engineering here at Fortinet. We are an organization that's been around since 2000. Uh, we boast one of the, the largest, if not the largest, uh, installed base of security customers, uh, in, you know, unique security customers globally. Uh, we have a very large portfolio at this point. We're, we're very focused on attacking uh, or protecting the expanded attack surface, uh, multi-vector uh, uh, threats um, across the entire um, enterprise uh, threat landscape, right? So we have a number of products and we're very focused on the integration of these products. Um, but we're also very focused on upskilling professionals in our industry. Uh, we want to see security practitioners um, better able to defend their organizations and defend um, the data that really is important to all of us. And, we, and we've worked with over 700,000 um, professionals and uh, you know, they're up, upskilling those individuals. Our mission at Fortinet is to secure people and devices and the data that's import, important to those individuals wherever, wherever it may be. And that's particularly important important because all of us have a digital persona, right? We're, the, the actual lives that we live are represented in a digital world. And it's important for us to be confident that that persona is secure and it's secure on the devices that we use or in the organizations that we trust to host that information. And the, informa the organizations with which we work that host that information they have their own mission and our mission is derived from their mission and we want to make sure that we're aligned with them um, and deliver on what's important to our customers. And so this is what Fortinet focuses on day in and day out. And we do this from what we call the security fabric approach, the Fortinet security fabric. If you're familiar with the concept of a mesh architecture that's becoming quite popular now, it's really about broad integration across a set of capabilities, right? So we're talking about delivering features to provide broad protection that integrates with the environments and ecosystems that our customers define. Um, this encompasses a lot of things that we uh, that are very in vogue to talk about. We, you know, focusing on zero trust access, supporting those remote users or users wherever they may decide to connect and wherever they need access. Right, could be in the LAN or WAN, or could be work from home environments. Our session today will spoke, focus specifically on application and that application journey because an application isn't just written now and deployed you know, in a waterfall way. You know, it's constantly iterated. That presents a lot of challenges to organizations. You know, those applications are deployed across um, data center, cloud, CDN environments, right? And so we have to be um, able to defend those in a very agile way from a mitigation and response perspective. Everything we do at Fortinet, um, you know, from a threat intelligence perspective is sourced from FortiGuard. FortiGuard is very important to um, uh, the services that we deliver because it informs uh, everything that we do from a threat intelligence perspective. And so the heart of what we, the, the, the intelligence that we bring to our uh, portfolio is sourced from FortiGuard. Now, some of the threats, um, you know, that are, causing increased risk. It, I talk a lot about risk mitigation because you never get to zero risk, but you have to understand what the threats are and you have to reduce the risk as much as possible. Digital innovation is raising the risk profile for an organization across the board. Threats are becoming more sophisticated. Um, you know, things like misconfigurations of environments uh, make breaches more probable, right? So how do we, how do we solve for that? 
uh, ransomware incidences are more costly and more devastating to an organization. We have to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, basically zero incidences of, of ransomware to, to be effective at this point. The cloud attack surface really presents a lot of new um, opportunities to be exposed. Uh, API endpoints and the web services are being distributed across, you know, ever growing environments. Um, and these environments are, you know, connected in, in so many different ways across many clouds. And so we have to, you know, consider uh, that growing attack surface and, and how, you know, these SDNs interact with our applications and support our applications. Um, the there's also the challenge of ecosystem complexity. If you're, an oper if you're a security operator, you're getting tons of alerts from m multiple vendors. Can you be uh, proficient on all of those platforms? It's hard, if not impossible. And then we owe, you know, relative to our specific geos, to our end customers, right, and to our um, uh, you know, uh, managing authorities, you know, some level of compliance, and we have to attest to those, right? I, I think the big challenge there is the burden of attestation. And how do I, you know, make sure that I'm constantly in compliance? How do I provide the data with, uh, you know, a, the least level of effort uh, to those uh, uh, meet those compliance requirements? And so, within an organization, organizations uh, have more specific challenges. When I talk to the CISOs, we typically start with organization because the organizational challenges really are about people, process, and tools, right? And it's really important for the security teams, the CISOs organization to align with what other organizations are doing, right? A lot of times those teams are brought in later in the delivery process. They don't know that applications are being built until they're ready to be rolled out. And then we have to go, oh wait, I have some compliance requirements and let's pull everything back. That's an inhibitor to agility, right? And, and, the, and the security team doesn't wanna be an inhibitor. So we have to look to organizational, or we have to look at our organizational challenges um, and how, how can we, you know, from our perspective, provide tools that bring aligned people and processes, right? So that's the first thing. But then you compound that with skill gaps. This is a problem that's probably never going to be solved. You know, as much, it, 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 threats are evolving, tools are evolving, and, uh, you know, just trying to find qualified individuals is very difficult. Budgets are very tight for organizations around security. You know, less than 1% is often the number for an enterprise to spend on security. Um, you know, how do you budget enough headcount, you know, to, to provide you know, appropriate levels of uh, workflow management? And then we have infra uh, technology debt. Uh, we have legacy SecOps practices. They're not uh, application oriented, right? They're more about, you know, firewalls, block and defend, layer four type stuff. Um, so we have to, to find a way to overcome that technology debt and start to use new tools. And then finally, manual workflows. So you have the legacy, you have the legacy tools in the security practice, but you also have the workflows that go along with that, right? So all of the day two stuff, the production stuff where somebody submits a ticket, I have to work the, the ticket, uh, open a port, you know, all these things take time, they're inhibitor to agility. So these things really combine to make providing security for our applications and be non-gating from a security perspective, very difficult. So application security, there's an entire life cycle. It's very in vogue today to talk about shift left. And we, we at Fortinet, we do shift left. So shift left is about source code. You're factoring the application. It's pre-production. You can do uh, static analysis on that source code. The goal on that side is really to reduce the, um, uh, the attack surface, right? So before I get into production, I wanna shrink the attack surface as much as possible. But I can't guarantee you that that attack surface is zero because there's gonna be zero day attacks. There's gonna be stuff I never caught. Um, and that's where in this ses session, we wanna focus on production environments, right? The shift right. It's very important that we provide application security that's dynamic. And this is where you're gonna face the highest risk. So we want to make sure that we're managing that risk uh, in a dynamic way, in a continual way. And we know that from a, uh, from a threat profile perspective, web services are our top concern. We, our th own threat intelligence service, uh, uh, information that we source through our FortiGuard services globally, finds that the top attacks are still uh, web attacks, you know, buffer overflows, 
SQL injections, right? The OWASP top 10 things that we have uh, come to know. These are the things that are being exploited. And when you look at those being the top threats and the fact that half of you know, global enterprises have more than 100 applications deployed um, in, in their environment, it, possibly way more than that, that's a significant problem, right? And then you're constantly in these um, agile delivery models iterating on those applications monthly. You know, let's say in this uh, data here, we're seeing 25 times a month. So let's say you have to update, um, uh, you know, you have to tune your profiles for web security uh, 2,500 times a month. You know, who can do that, right? And so we have to look at better ways to provide web app protection. So we're gonna focus on uh, a, a few things here today. Web app protection, these are your traditional OWASP threats. We're gonna talk about uh, bot mitigation. And these aren't the, the bots that are, um, uh, these, these are the bots that are doing things like um, uh, form injection, right? Disrupting your web services. And then we're also gonna talk about API protection because there are so many APIs out there uh, they proliferate so broadly, and then how? It, it, not even before protection, just inventorying the APIs is a big problem, right? And so, how do we do that in an efficient way without having to upload um, uh, parameters and schema for every API that we possibly publish, which could be not impossible? So when we when we protect applications, uh, we categorize the threats um, based on how we how we want to protect them. Right. So in this diagram, we start at the top and we apply mitigation features with the least uh, that are least CPU intensive, right? The lowest cost of compute. Right. So essentially, if you look at things like IP, excuse me, um, uh, malicious hosts or malicious IP sources, volumetric or protocol based DDoS attacks, um, protocol violations, those are things that we can filter out rather easily up front at low cost. So we do those first. And then we get into our uh, uh, detection engines where we're applying uh, you know, signature-based approaches, right? Signature-based approaches are still very important because they're, again, lower cost of compute. And so as we start to filter through this and we get down into the more advanced, um, maybe new uh, threats, uh, unknown threats, uh, or behavioral-oriented threats, we start to need new tools. And that's where we get into things like machine learning that can do more advanced pattern uh, recognition. But we apply all of these because they all really can be, all of these detection methods provide for correlation that we can then weight and score. And we have the highest confidence that something is an anomaly that is benign or an anomaly that is malicious. Traditional uh, approaches were strictly signature based. We don't get rid of signatures or they're, they're important, uh, but they, you know, when you look at next generation firewalls or any just firewall network firewalls in general, a sign using only a signature based approach, um, they're, they're not specific to web threats. Web threats have their own needs. Um, HTTP specifically, you know, has its uh, own, own specific needs. It's, it's not, uh, a network firewall isn't necessarily session aware. It's not aware of how the application expects to receive uh, patterns. Um, and so we look to uh, WAFs or web API or web app application and API protection platforms, right? They, they are session aware. Uh, they can look at anomalies in, in the specific patterns of HTTP that are coming through. Um, but, you know, they also have false positive rates. The weakness in, in the reason that these aren't typically or people shy away from implementing a web application firewall is that it has to be tuned constantly. It, there's, a, there's a heavy burden um, from false positives. There's a lot of noise that's potentially generated. And so in where we've migrated toward, evolved toward is using machine learning to advance and uh, mitigate or actually remove these weaknesses. So how it works in our, or how traditional or a little bit more on the traditional uh, approach from a WAF uh, and how it learns about or approaches um, uh, application traffic. So typically you have different types of requests. You have normal requests, you have anomalies that are benign, and you have threats, right? They all come in the front door. 
And the traditional approach is to take a whitelist pattern matching approach. Does it match the regex statement? Yes or no. Um, if it if it does if it does you know uh, match a uh, uh, you know a, a, a signature that has a particular uh, regex statement, maybe I I block it then. Um, but I'm blocking I'm taking all anomalies out and I'm blocking all of them, right? But a lot of those anomalies are completely benign, and so we get a lot of false positives. And this is very disruptive to user experience. But at the same time, attackers who are very uh, savvy understand what the patterns the system expects are and know how to work around those. Um, there's tons of different types of uh, URL encoding methods, um, and they're very good at bypassing web application firewalls. So we have to take a completely different approach. Um, you know, the issues that we have, again, are, you know, blocking anomalies, um, you know, using uh, only signature-based approaches. And so what we want to do is change this to uh, a model that can be more intelligent and dynamic. So we do still apply the anomaly detection. You don't, you don't, you still want to filter out some of the noise. But what we want to do is we want to take everything that's an anomaly and do further processing on it. We can pass through the uh, allowed normal traffic, the good known traffic, right? But then within our system, we apply a two-layer machine learning process. We do uh, localized machine learning, uh, and Shreeja is going to talk about that in, in her part of the, uh, the demonstration. But we also employ uh, FortiGuard um, threat models that um, have been learning over time. And so what we're able to do is we can say, all right, this is a benign anomaly, right? This a user mistyped something into a form, or somebody actually implemented a SQL injection, and we can we can block and filter out what are attacks, and then pass through what are benign anomalies. And so this is completely different than what's been done uh, in in prior versions of web application protection. <clears throat> 